Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you, and Tessie Borden is on the line with us. Tessie is a communications specialist with Clergy and Laity United for Economic Justice, CLUE. CLUEjustice.org is the website. You can tweet uh, Tessie at CLUEjustice. Uh, Tessie, welcome to the program. Hi, how are you? I am well. Thank you for joining us. So uh, the, the uh, article that I have uh, relative to your being on the program and everything is a headline, Together We Fight Back, May Day March. Today is May Day in Los Angeles for workers' rights. Uh, speak to us about A, May Day and its association with workers, and B, what's going on in Los Angeles. Well, May Day is uh, traditionally the um, day of the worker around the world. Um, here in Los Angeles, it also takes on, um, starting in about 2006, it takes on um, meaning for immigrants because immigrants are also workers and because on that day we've traditionally had um, gatherings of um, immigrants um, to advocate for their rights as well. So this year, I think it's become really important for us to um, to gather um, because of um, what we have been seeing in terms of attacks on workers and attacks on immigrants by the uh, Trump administration. So we have three um, things, three messages that we're aiming to send to the Trump administration um, that we will defend, protect, and respect workers' rights that we will fight the anti-immigrant agenda and stop ICE efforts to rip apart families, and that we will remain civically engaged in the run-up to this year's crucial midterm election. Wow. Now, you're on your website over at cluejustice.org. It says, so all religions believe in economic justice. And uh, at Clue, we educate, organize, and mobilize the faith community to accompany workers and their families in their struggle for good jobs, dignity, and justice. I remember in the 60s, and the early 70s, there was a substantial progressive religious movement from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King uh, talking about social justice issues and, and war and peace issues and obviously civil rights issues to the, uh, the Berrigan brothers and large chunks of the Catholic Church who were engaged in, in um, I'm forgetting the phrase that they used back then, but, uh, you know, social justice work. And, mm -hmm. and, and to the, uh, the, the Quakers were quite well organized. The Church of Christ was growing. Um, you know, numbers of progressive denominations. And then, uh, you know, Reagan came along, and we saw this shift in the church groups. Uh, you know, George W. Bush was uh, responsible for the uh, outreach to the right-wing religious community during the Reagan presidency and during his father's presidency and candidacy in 92. And, right. and, and, all, and basically the whole religious, uh, or at least the Christian shtick in America, well, and to some extent the Jewish one too, became, oh, we are now all conservatives and we're all right-wingers <laughs> and all this you know, right-wing religious infrastructure grew up on radio and in television. Pat Robertson became a billionaire, uh, Jerry Falwell and, and, uh, uh, and others, I mean, you know, numerous ones. Um, uh, died and their sons took over their empires and flipped them into right-wing, hardcore right-wing, anti-worker, anti-rights uh, organizations. Are you seeing an, uh, a remobilization of the progressive religious uh, community, or is this, you know, the, the, the bare remnant hanging on by their fingernails? Oh, not at all, not at all. I think that we've been... Um, working on that rebirth um, for quite a long time. I mean, uh, um, Clue was started, got started around 1997, um, and I think it was responding to sort of that perception because it's really, it wasn't what was the, the truth on the ground, but it was a perception, you know, that if you were a person of faith, you were likely to be cons uh, conservative in terms of your politics. Okay. Um, and 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 you know the Catholic Church has has for a very long time had social services that were reaching out to the poor and to the uh, disenfranchised and as you you know you mentioned the Quakers um, and there were um, several other uh, denominations that were working in that area um, it's just that um, I think what happened was that um, when the moral majority came up um, during those years. Um, there, there, there was such an engagement uh, on their side 
in terms of with the Republican Party and with and with trying to move the Republican Party to the right, right. Um, that 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 was sort of where a lot of the visibility was. Um, but we have um, you know been very uh, uh, allied with. Uh, organized labor and with unions uh, for as long as we have existed. And we are seeing now, because we're seeing the urgency, right, of, mm-hmm. of changing the narrative around immigrants, around workers, uh, that we're also seeing a lot of people who are coming to the fight um, that maybe were absent in the past. We're then trying to to unite and coalesce and and may day is a really great opportunity uh to do that i've been participating in may day for several years and i have to tell you this year i'm seeing a a lot of people who in the past have maybe stayed away or were not super visible or were not super Mm -hmm. engaged they are coming back and they are really engaging around may day to restart or reignite this um, fight on the on the on the fight of of, of workers and on right. the fight of uh, immigrants. I mean, part of what we're seeing this year is this um, possible Janus decision that might be coming down from the Supreme Court. And given the makeup of the Supreme Court, you know, we are we're pre- sort of preparing for something that might not be favorable. Right. This uh, decision will decide whether whether a national right to right to work for less. Uh, uh, Correct. It, it basically, yeah. it's a decision that will or will not destroy, put the final nail in the coffin of, of unions. Well, I mean, you also see, though, across the country, the teachers are, are striking for more education, yep. for bigger education budgets, and, you know, better salaries because their salaries have been so poor for such a long time. Right. And they're striking so, on behalf of their kids. <laughs> exactly. And so, so what you're seeing is, you know, I don't know that it would be the final nail in the coffin. It would be a serious challenge, but mm-hmm. um, but I, I, you know I think that what what we're seeing is we're trying to figure out. Okay, well then, if this happens, what will be our paths? What will be our, our organizing uh, alternatives? And and you know, there's been a lot of discussion um, within labor about that already. And I think that you know we are. As, as allies of labor and as allies of, of immigrants, we are we're certainly part of that conversation. We're talking with Tessie Borden, the communication specialist with Clergy and Laity United for Economic Justice, CLUE. Uh, cluejustice.org is the website. And uh, Tessie, I, I went to elementary school in the 1950s in Lansing, Michigan, uh, a union town. And uh, what I learned as a little kid was that May Day... Uh, had basically two two things going. Number one, that workers all around the world celebrated May Day, and, and we had workers' celebrations of May Day in the 1950s in Michigan. Um, mm-hmm. And number two, that we'd all go out on the on the playground and build a maypole, uh, which uh, you know we later learned had to do with uh, pagan holidays, you know, uh, spring celebrations in anticipation of a good crop yield. And mm-hmm. and uh, you know now it seems like both of those. Uh, foundations of May Day have been just stripped from our our cultural knowledge base. Uh, how I many people know the the purpose. origins of May I mean, Day? Yeah, I think that's on purpose because I mean, you know, Labor Day in the United States is, is um, you know, September first or first right. Monday in September, um, and I think that that was a very um, uh, you know conscious um, sort of anti left kind of kind of move um, in in this country um, where we did not want to be associated with anything that had any kind of shading of being friendly to to workers um, right. and in 19, in uh, 2006 we see that the um, immigrant rights movement in Los Angeles um, in response again to attacks right to attacks in in Congress um, on their right, um, th- that that it sprang forward and 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 gave new life to this idea that that workers celebrate who they are and their um, their activism on May first. Um, and I, I I mean I think this is something that 
at, at least, like I said, in, in the time that I've been involved with it, um, I'm seeing it flower again. I'm seeing it, you know, growing, not diminishing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, that's uh, you know, a, a good thing, <laughs> broadly speaking. Uh, Tessie, mm -hmm. thanks so much for dropping by. Uh, it's Thank great, you very much. Great talking with you, and I, I really appreciate your being part of our program. Tessie Borden, Happy Communications. May Day. Thank you. Happy May Day to you. Communications Specialist with Clergy and Laity United for Economic Justice. Uh, Cluejustice.org is the website, and uh, we'll be right back.